As we saw in the last video, the mesh render is very important for 3D elements for these meshes because this is used for drawing the cube that we have here right now, for example. So if it's disabled, we can't see the cube, but if we enabled it as well, uh, it appears in here. Okay, and there are lots of properties for this mesh render. We have the cast shadows property, so we can define if shadows are going to come out of this cube and to be drawn other surfaces, for example. We, of course, have received shadows if shadows of other elements are going to be drawn in this cube. And we have other things here, but the one that I want to talk about the most here is this materials property. Okay, so what's a material? Let's imagine a different case here. We have this cube but we don't like this color. What if we want to turn it into red, for example? What do we need to do? If you go to the mesh render, you might have expected to have something like color. Okay, so you can just select the color and change to red and then you can move forward with making your game. This doesn't happen because we need to do this with materials. Okay, of course it would be simple to have a, a red col uh, a color picker in here so you can just change the color of the cube, but it is important to understand this hierarchy. It is very important that we have this hierarchy because the materials can have much more details than just setting the color. Okay, so the responsibility of setting the color, among other things, is in the material. But here's the thing, we have a default material here. We can even expand it if we want. But notice that all the options that we have here are grayed out. Okay, No need to, to worry about what these options mean right now. Just see that everything is gray. Okay, We can't change anything. I can't change color, I can't change emission, detail mask, whatever I want here. This happens because this is the default material. Okay, As we made a, a very simple primitive 3D element, it needs to have at least one material. So Unity provides a default material here, okay? So we can see the cube, otherwise it would be a, probably a pink color, okay? Because it's the full of some GPUs. Uh, so what if we want to change the color of the cube? To do this, we need to make our own material. So to do this, we're going to the Assets folder in the project window. We're going to right click, select Create, and then we're going to choose Material, okay? And you notice that you can in the beginning you can well set the materials name so let's set this to cube material or test material for example the name doesn't matter right now and now if you look at the inspector you're going to see that there are lots of details about this material okay so notice that the inspector window not only works with a uh, game object but it also works with the things that we have in our assets folder so you can see lots of things here, like rendering mode, what is going to be the color, uh, if we have a normal or height map. If you work with 3D software, you should be familiar with all of these names in here. But we're going to keep things simple. Okay, we just want to change the color of our cube. So we're going to pick and click this white rectangle here to open the color picker, and we're going to choose red. And notice that when you choose whatever color, notice that these little sliders, they change because every color that we choose is a composition of four values, okay? It's a composition of red, green, blue, and alpha, okay? So R, G, B, A. And well, if we choose red, the red component is 255 and the other, two are zero, the other ones are zero. If we choose blue, for example, if we choose the right tone, well, it's zero for red, zero for green, and full for blue. And all the other intermediate colors okay, are going to be a combination of these other colors that we have here. Okay, you can even see how the sliders swap positions while we define the color that we want. And we also have alpha here. Okay, So anyway, let's choose red. And we have our cube here. Let's select it. To apply this material, we can do this in two ways. We could either drag this material and drop in the cube while we are in the scene window, or if we have the cube selected and we go to the inspector, in the materials property of the mesh render component, there is a default material here. Okay, so we just need to drag and drop our newly created material to be in this place. So I'm going to drag and drop here, and our cube is now red. Okay, and we can uh, basically do whatever we want. But what if we want this red color to be transparent? Okay, if I come here to this material, I click red and I change alpha. Notice that nothing happens while I'm changing alpha. Okay, if I change the color, the cube instantly updates to, to go to whatever color we want, but not the transparency. So what if we wanted to make a, a glass here, glass wall? So let's make another one. We're going to go to our hierarchy, right click, Select 3D object and then cube again. So we have cube one. 
We're going to change the position to be 0 on x, 0 on y, and minus 1 on z. And to make this cube thin, we're going to change its um, scale in the depth axis. Instead of 1, we use 0 0.2. And we can change x, okay, so to make this wall to be squared, x and y need to have the same value. So we can use 3 on x and 3 on y, for example, okay. So this is completely covering our cube. Let's also rename this cube to glass wall, okay. So the game object is saved, it's been renamed, and let's make a material for this glass wall. So in our project window, we right click, create, uh, we're going to choose material. This is going to be glass wall material. And now, let's start by applying the material here. Okay, so I'm just going to drag and drop here, making sure that the glass wall is selected. And now I'm going to change its color. Let's change it to a blue, like this one. Okay. And what if you want to apply transparency? We're going to decrease the alpha value, but you need to tell the renderer, okay, the shader that we're using, that we want this to be transparent, okay? So what do we need to do this? This is important because of performance, okay? We need to, to be very sure of what we're doing if we want to apply transparency, because transparency is a heavy operation, okay? It's heavy to render, to draw a scene with lots of transparent objects, so you need to specifically tell that you know what you're doing and you want to apply transparency, otherwise you just uh, waste some pressure resources. So to do this, we just go to the rendering mode and we're going to change from opaque to transparent. And notice how it changed. Apparently it just became lighter, but if you look it against the cube, it's working like a transparent uh, wall. Okay, we can even make it a little bit like this. We can change the, the scale on Z to be thinner, so 0 0.01 for example. It's a very thin uh, sheet of glass that is now in front of our cube. Okay, and now that we have these two elements, what if we want to make a floor? Okay, we can just right click here, select 3D object, and there are two ways. We could use plane, okay, so it's well, basically a, a thin uh, piece of uh, paper, okay, a very thin piece of, uh, of plane. You can just position here. Uh, let's change the position to be 0, 0, 0. Okay, actually, Y, let's use minus 2, like this. And to change the color of the plane, we can just create another material here. This is going to be the floor material. I'm going to apply this floor material in here. And I'm going to change its color to, uh, let me think, I think a dark green should, should be interesting here. Okay, so we have a dark green plane. And if you want to make it bigger, we just have to change the scale on X to something like 20 on a Z to 20. Okay, almost, we, we can we can nearly not see where this plane ends, okay? And you can also, you can now notice a few things. We can start seeing the shadows to be rendered in this game, okay? So we have the cube right here and the shadow is being projected in, in this plane, okay? You can even move it down here and we're going to see how uh, the shadows are being rendered. And we also have a shadow for the glass, but it's very, it's barely, we can barely see it, okay? And now that we are talking about lighting, let's get in more details about this in the next video.